27 rebounds. I know shooters get into it. Hater alert. alert. Hater alert. Hater alert. You know why I'm here. Now let me say I'm the biggest hater I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk I hate the way that you dress, I hate the way that you sneak this If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct Yeah, you know I'm here <laughs> So I spend a lot of time on my channel Speaking nicely about most shows, right? Right? And Kazuya is just always like Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about He doesn't know the situation Like, duh! You don't tell him shit! What do you expect? Man, I'm done talking about this clown. Grown ass man skipping through the hallway. Get off my screen. And you guys wanted more consistency from me, so here. I needed something to talk about. I needed something to yap about to hold y'all over while I'm working on the big projectos. And I thought to myself, what better way to do that than hating? Hating on one of my all time gripes about the Japanese animation industry. This is personal. I have gathered you all here today to get something off my chest. I gotta do it, man. This is a long time coming. I have done an extensive amount of research in my time as a supporter of the anime world to figure out why things like filler even fucking exist. And once you get out of that rabbit hole, you realize that a bigger boss, a bigger foe, is on the other side of the fence, ready to fight you after the first one. What is it? What is the reason filler anime movies are made? You know, besides all the beautiful, hardworking staff that want to get paid, right? Please, stop this madness. Why are we still getting films like this in the big ass age of 2024? Before? Y'all had an excuse. Y'all did. Yeah, you definitely did. But now, you're gonna have to do something different to earn my movie ticket, buddy. Finding out how long Japan has been making movies that don't matter or care to match up at all to the story the offer is making at the time feels like product assassination. And I know some people are gonna be like, Hey, Leo! Shut up! This doesn't really matter because it's canon to the anime. And to that I have to say... I don't care. <laughs> I've never cared. Even as a child, I've never cared. If the studio adapting a manga changes anything about the author's writing or world, I usually hate it. I'm one of the people that love when studios show their personality by not adapting a fight one for one. Basically putting their own sauce on what the offer couldn't do in a fight scene in the manga or in whatever source material the anime is adapting. But that's it! That's where I draw the line! You see that? Right there, that's where it is. Unless the offer is giving the go-ahead in my mind, I am always 100% in the minority with studios getting the rights to these properties and doing whatever the hell they want with them. Basically, character assassinating characters that actually weren't that bad in the source material. Guys, you're not gonna believe me, but Sakura is actually likable if you read the manga. Who would have guessed? Not me. And this especially happens in movies. It kills me. It kills my entire vibe for a film if I know the story doesn't matter towards the story I actually give a damn about. If I wanted to see fan fiction, I'd go to Wattpad, bro. What the? I want to see Kubo's vision. I want to see Kishimoto's vision. Kodiyama's vision. God rest his soul. Filler anime movies are mostly used to provide outside revenue to a studio who have the rights to adapt an anime. But if an adaptation is too close to catching up to that said source material and have basically no more story to tell, <laughs> well, well, get ready, buddy. You're about to have your time wasted. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. 
This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. But I've considered it. It's the same reason the early 2000s are littered with filler arcs on filler arcs with filler movies that either complement what these characters are all about or completely make them do things the offered would never make them do. Basically giving little black boy western fans like me something to hate on while I eat my cereal in the morning. It's okay baby girl. They don't know you like I know you. They don't really understand you like I do. That's why we get so many roundabout story arcs with randos that we never ever see again inside the actual story. <laughs> don't nobody give a f about this girl. Get her off the screen. Because the offer is like, wait, y'all, y'all put who in my show? Daddy. Do I look like- I genuinely wonder if manga offers get fans coming up to them asking about the complexities and inner workings of a filler character. <laughs> I would pay good money to see someone actually ask Kishimoto Sensei how he came up with the story arc for the fan favorite character, Sora. <laughs> But to put it simply, these type of films are used to keep the buzz around the series alive. And I understand because of course, as a creator myself, you gotta make sure people are still talking about your show while you're working on that next said season or just simply waiting for the offer to make more material. But come on, we all know why these are being made. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And I'm not lying when I say growing up, these movies were everywhere, bro. For every shonen. I can make a single video alone on just one franchise's movies if I wanted to. That's how long this has been going on. That is how long this borderline money laundering scandal has been going on. You hear that, Japan? I know what you're on. There's no way y'all are just making this for fun. I see through all that. I know what's happening. We can just go down the list. Naruto, Bleach, Dragon Ball, One Piece, even Hunter x Hunter. Wait, Detective Conan has 26 movies? Why? You have 26 movies? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess. Even when I was a kid, I had that hater in me for these filler anime movies, man. I knew what they were doing, and it disgusted me. Because as a kid, I was always wondering, why did Naruto never wear this cool-ass outfit again? He got that shit on, though. Why did Naruto never do a fucking rainbow Rasengan ever again? Or just simply talk or mention anybody in these movies ever again. It's because Kishimoto Sensei did not care about these films. This was simply the studio doing their own thing and get into the bag. And as a young impressionable anime fan, all you could do is just accept it. It's like I genuinely wonder, right? Did Toriyama Sensei, God rest his soul, ever consider any of these Dragon Ball movies and the things they introduce inside the canon to his story, his vision, or is it all just monkey brain bullshit for us to get hyped to and have fun memories about, only to realize as adults that none of it really mattered. I'm a bit sad. Actually, I'm lying. I'm quite devastating. I guess you could say Broly is the one thing that stuck, but even I don't know if that was a Toriyama-led decision. I would have to do some research about that. I simply don't get it. I simply don't get why it's so hard for studios to do the same thing and go the Demon Slayer route of making movies around specific arcs within the story that feel climactic and big enough to deserve a theatrical release. My biggest pet peeve in life is that I hate having my time wasted. I don't like hate watching. I don't like watching a lot of bad stuff because I don't like my time wasted. You can get good stuff out of bad media, but I'm never going to be actively looking 
for that bad media it sort of just stumbles inside my lap that is really the heart of this video i don't want to go see films that don't matter to the author story and he didn't even write what's the point am i crazy is this just me i could really just be staying home and tuning in on the couch then i would love to hear from someone that has actually worked inside these spaces inside an actual studio and get to the bottom of why most studios don't go this route for filmmaking for example i truly think and i will stand on this until the day i die that studio mappa would have benefited crazy if they made the finale of attack on titan into a theatrical release take my fucking money because everybody know that the way they stretched it out to the very last crumb won't really matter in the long run. Nobody's gonna remember how much they stretched it out. But I feel it just would have been a banger experience nonetheless. For a show so massive, I would have paid $30 for a movie ticket if it meant I could have watched the ending to my favorite story of all time on the big screen but no instead animation studios want me to pay twelve dollars and fifty cents for a ticket drain my bank account for concession food bring my own water into the theater and then be told i can't bring my own water into the theater walk back to my car go back into the theater only for the movie i'm watching to be a complete waste of my time it's really hard to believe that studios really force all of the hard-working staff and crew on these projects to bust their ass on a story just for it to be nonsense. Nobody wants to watch the studio's vision for this story because you're not the offers. The most recent offender of this in the industry is for a show that you guys might know. I kinda, I, I, I kinda talk about it a lot. A non-canon film in the big age of 2024, you're better than this. I do feel like Spy Family though is one of the only shows in its genre that could have pulled off a non-canon film in 2024 considering just how gaggy and loosely told the story is spy family isn't a show that completely relies on its narrative but let me tell you i was actually excited to go see this when i was hearing that it was coming out i just watched season two made that video i was on a spy family high i needed more and i was immediately shot down by the fact that the movie isn't even canon i hate it here it's a bad time. And after that, I knew what had to be done. They couldn't keep getting away with this. I felt the same way about the Black Clover film that came out. Not canon. The Seven Deadly Sins movie. Not canon. I've never even seen Fairy Tale, but I know that shit's not canon. What a surprise! But hold your horses, buddy. We need to talk about the big dog. My Hero Academia. Ooh, you leave her. Ooh. With quadruplets. Therapy works, y'all. I'm telling you, seek it. The number one inspiration for this video. Because these dudes don't stop. And it makes me want to scream at every new film announcement. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know Horikoshi, the offer behind My Hero Academia, has said countless times before that he considers the movies as canon to his story and most of the things that happen in these movies are pretty cool right you would want most of these to be canon to the story but Horikoshi sama kohei sama can i call you kohei let me ask you something and i want you to be very honest when you answer this did you write the story for these movies and are the events of these movies besides just cameos of the characters ever going to be mentioned again in your story uh oh uh, damn hell oh uh, uh, fuck wouldn't you think that midoriya sharing one for all with bakugo warner i don't know like a conversation about that in the future with how egotistical bakugo is turns out kachan didn't remember anything about me transferring one for all to him and somehow the power still resided inside of me what do you mean? What do you mean? Kind of forgot about. Kind of forgot about. Kind of forgot about. Kind of forgot about. You know, <laughs> cause cause it's all canon, right? Right, Cody Kusama? If they have your family held hostage, bro, blink twice. If you really don't want to be saying this, blink. 
twice, bro. If the events of these movies are truly canon to your manga, then what even is the timeline of events? Does it really match up with your timeline and your narrative? I'm not gonna do the math, but you're really asking a lot from the viewer to believe all of this happened in the first year of high school for these students. So you're telling me that none of these characters are gonna mention these events ever again. Nobody. Ever. Stop the cap, Horikoshi. Stop, Stop the cap. cap. My Hero Academia movies aggravate me so much every time they're announced because there are so many cool ideas in them but the fact that i know the characters will never treat it like it even happened once we eventually get back into the show for the next season it is so annoying these are gigantic and incredible important events in these characters lives that just aren't spoken of and it's just like bro that is so unimmersive it's so unimmersive to me that even the offer trying to help the studio out by saying that they're canon doesn't warrant any bit of respect for me. You're asking a lot of your viewers to make them sit here and believe that Bakugo would never bring up or talk about being given the greatest power on the planet for a short amount of time. He's just never gonna talk about it again. Just cause Horikoshi says it's canon doesn't mean they actually are for me. I'm sorry. Call me a little crybaby about it, call me whatever. That's just how I feel about it. And comment below, truly. I truly want to hear y'all thoughts on this. This is a safe debate space. I can just get a little carried away, you know? Let me, uh, let me compose myself. Why do I imagine the CEO of Bones like having G-Men camped outside Horikoshi's house, just waiting for him to slip up and say something bad about the anime? That man is compromised. We cannot believe a word he says. Because after you grasp the fact that the film is gonna reset back to the status quo after a life changing event in a character's life that you think should be remembered till the end of their entire story, you then realize a stark contrast going on between the quality of the show we actually care about and the movies. So you're telling me that half of the studio's main staff on the show gets sent away to work on a movie that doesn't matter towards the series you're adapting and probably won't ever be mentioned again within the actual show. And then eventually, the show that people actually care about keeps getting shit on because it feels like the quality and care drops every season. And don't get me wrong, y'all. Deku drop kicking a dude from across the room after going Super Saiyan gets me hyped too. That shit's cool. I'm tired now though to me. I, in the beginning I was like, okay, it's cool. <sighs> but I just can't get jiggy with the entire thing. I just can't do it. And on the real, we all are really just looking on the outside in on all the inner workings of this process. We really don't know shit. But at the same time, the product sort of speaks for itself. I love the Naruto The Last Movie. It's probably my favorite movie in the franchise because despite it not being inside the manga and completely written by Kishimoto-sensei, the events in this story carry over into the story and are actually remembered. The studio put out a product that Kishimoto-sensei himself said fits inside the universe and he actually uses it. Or whoever is co-writing Boruto now. Seeing the quality and interest of My Hero Academia drop every year is a whole different story I want to talk about once the anime is over, so I'll leave it right there. My Hero Academia is one of the industry's biggest franchises and I'm genuinely curious how bankrupt are they that they need to shit out filler movie after filler movie every year. I know it sounds like I'm just yapping. And oh for sure, I am. But it's just really sad that I know this isn't gonna change anything. Simply because there is money to be made. And I can't hate on that y'all. People got families to feed. Go get y'all bags. I just wish there were a little bit more meaning on how they go about it. Because that would make motherfuckers like me so happy. From consumer to producer, please make all anime movies canon and make them matter towards the future of the story. I hate when anime adaptations, not just shonens, are seen by studios as just a conduit for a manga author's work and not as art itself. 
Cause yeah, the staff is definitely elevating the story with this adaptation and bringing more attention to the story. But I, for one, will never get behind studios taking adaptations by the hair and going, yeah. We about to destroy everything you just built with our terrible ass writing. Get ready. When the studio thinks they can do a better job writing the story than the author that created that story, that grinds my gears. It happened to the Promised Neverland, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again. Even studios like your photo bar are going the extra mile in adapting an entire film trilogy out of canon material. That's that shit I like to see. Most of the times I don't care whether or not a studio makes a filler storyline or a movie cool. The fact that it even exists gives me a reason to pop out and be a hater for it. And that's what I feed off of. I wake up bright and early to hate on anime filler content in hopes we never get it again. <sighs> Good God, that was some, that was some nerd shit. Guys, now that the video is over, how about we, uh, how about we all as a collective go outside and do something, anything. Just talk to somebody, bruh. Because remember, you can still be a nerd and still get hoes. You just got to take that first step and recognize the cringe. Girl, shut the fuck up. You thought you ate that. <laughs> Did you tell me this was over? There ain't no use talking me over. Why can you try to tell me sooner? Why can you tell me it was over?